My guest today is Lorena Mesa. Lorena, how are you? Great. How are you? I'm doing really well. Tell me, what do you do? Oh, goodness. Do you mean day job or do you mean outside perhaps let's, my day let's, job? Let's start with your day job. Sure, sure. So I work for a company you may have heard of before called GitHub. GitHub I'm very familiar <laughs> with that. It's been, we've been talking about around Microsoft. For exactly, quite a bit last year exactly. So. so yeah, GitHub is a member of the Microsoft family. Uh, and I sit as a data engineer on a team called Software Intelligence Systems. Uh-huh. We call it SIS for short because it's a little bit of a mouthful. All right, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you're doing a lot of Python and a lot of data yeah. analysis for that. Right? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're the team that sits between machine learning and semantics. So you can kind of think of us as the dedicated data engineers for those two groups. And definitely Python is a language we use in that team. And you're also really involved in the Python community, right? You run, yeah. I know you run Pi Ladies here mm-hmm. in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And you're also on the board of what? The board of directors for the Python Software Foundation. That sounds really impressive. <laughs> you know, it's totally... Um, I like to kind of tease a little bit and say it's like I'm a glorified email reader, but this is the kind of work that I love to do. So Uh in some contexts, that's definitely true. But yeah, the Python Software Foundation Board of Directors is definitely a very cool, it's been a very amazing and humbling experience for me. I never heard of the Python Software Foundation until I met you. So tell me what is it? How long has it been? Sure, sure. So one of the most frequent questions that I'm asked is, is if you are a director, are you a core Python uh, developer. In other and, words, do you build the product, the, right, the language right. itself? Do you build the language itself? And my answer would, is, I as an individual am not a core Python developer, but that's not to say that a director couldn't be. Okay. So the Python Software Foundation is a 501c3, so that means we're a nonprofit, registered in the United States. And what we do is we oversee the trademark for Python. We run PyCon USA, which is like the biggest Python conference in all in all of the world. Hmm. We also then have a grants program. And broadly speaking, we are there to promote and evangelize Python's open source community and really make sure that we are building a diverse and inclusive community that reflects the Python user base of the complete world. That sounds a uh, great goal. <laughs> yeah, very exciting. Tell me about ways that you accomplish those. Sure, sure. So when I'm asked about, you know, what what does a director do? It's been really interesting for me. So I am now on my third term. And mm-hmm. when I initially put my name forward, let's see. Are these annual terms? Used to be annual, it shifted. So the board is 13 members. And that is actually all public votes. So minus the executive director who has a uh, director position on the board as well. So all of the folks that are on the board are in some way, shape, or form members of the Python open source community. The, they used to be one-year terms, but we've now moved to three-year terms, hmm. of which every year about a third of that of that population is up for vote. So I, I was just I was just elected again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, so, you know, being a director, there's a lot of different things that you can work on. So when you come in, it's not that, you know, here's the three policy things that you're mandated to work on. It's kind of choose your own adventure. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's minimum requirements that, you know, you come to, you come to the meetings, we have a bi-monthly meeting. Just today, we had a meeting this morning. Uh, So you participate in that. A lot of our chatter is through our list serve, which is for the board. And a lot of that is also then, you know, if we are now setting up these additional committees that directors can be a part of. So for example, I'm a member of the education committee. Mm -hmm. So we have now kicked off a first ever call saying we would love to hear from our community about what kind of grants that they would like to, to, or what kind of projects that we would be able to fund through this initiative that are related to education. So we have this education committee, which is really cool, that got kicked off. And we have a fun uh, finance committee because obviously, as I mentioned, the Python Software Foundation oversees trademark and we manage such things like PyPI, which is the uh, Python package index. So if you ever go in and install something from PIP, okay. uh, that's gonna be hosted by resources and infrastructure that we manage. So oh. finance is a big is a big deal. <laughs> So we have like a finance committee and then directors, you know, they can opt to be in some of these groups or they can opt not to. There's also these appointments for chairs. So today I was just elected vice chair elect, which is quite another mouthful. Uh (laughs) But like, you know, I had historically served as a communications chair. So what that I did in that role was every time we had we had our 
our meetings, I would be taking the, the minutes and sending it out to our communities through public community listserv so that people knew what we were working on, they could keep it, they can keep up to date. And then also over the over the years in my time as a communications chair, I worked on overseeing the Python Software Foundation blog. So that might mean uh, if there's an interesting developments from, for example, PyCon, we've got a core Python developer pre-conference. So sometimes we, we might have a blogger who's attending that and is writing up some cool stuff. So mm. for me, I might be thinking about what kind of content do we need to get in front of the community and all that. So really you can be hyper-specialized working in these committees. You can be focused, you know, me coming in, I'm very passionate about diversity and inclusion in the Python space. And as you mentioned, I've done work with PyLadies. So one of the things that I've really thought about is, you know, what's our code of conduct look like and we have a code of conduct work group of which directors can step into that but also the public our our python open source public group can also step in to help with that so really being a director there's like minimum requirements (laughs) but you know the the things that you're passionate about you're able to pursue more with a fine uh with a fine lens being a director because we're all together kind of thinking about what initiatives do we want to pioneer and where do we want to put the resources that, that the psf has behind us to work. Okay, and it sounds like your passion is communicating with the Python community Mm -hmm. and then supporting diversity and inclusion. Yeah, yeah, I've done a lot of work in education and I myself am a, I don't have a computer science degree. Neither do I. (laughs) Perfect, I love this. But you know, the way I got into it was I was so in love with the openness of the community and Uh the way that the community has provided so many resources for education and empowerment, meeting you wherever, where you're at, and that is something that I know I can give back. Uh, okay. Uh, tell me about some of the things that the foundation is doing to support the community. Definitely. So one of the things that I, I did a little bit of a head nod to, as I mentioned, we have this grants program. So what's a bit interesting is every year we have the big PyCon USA. So that's actually managed. Oh, when is that? So PyCon USA, it happens generally in May. Uh-huh. And the next few years it's going to be in Pittsburgh. And if I remember correctly, I think it's, I think it's late April in 2021 and then May in 2020. I could be mistaken. Okay. You can go to PyCon.org to check that out. I lived in Pittsburgh for a little while. <laughs> That's a pretty good time to be there. Yeah, but 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 what's really um but what's really cool about what we do there is with that with the profits from that conference, we one, use that to make sure we're able to pay our staff because yeah. that's really important. And then two, we're making sure that we're using the profits from that to you know keep our infrastructure that serves the Python open source community going. So like mm-hmm. PyPI, for example. But then three, we use profits from that to actually fund our global Python grants program, which is really, really exciting. So yeah. it can be anything from, you know, maybe you're running an event like a Jingo Girls, which is a one day tutorial written by some fantastic women in Europe um, by a group now called Jingo Girls, mm-hmm. where you write your first Jingo application. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe you want to you want to do a workshop like that in your local area and you need a few hundred bucks right. versus maybe you're doing a developer sprint on a really famous or popular Python open source tool, like let's say requests or something like pandas. Uh, if you are looking for additional fiscal support, you could go and talk to the Python Software Foundation and apply for a grant. So well, that's, what, that's what an example. What do people use that, those grants for if they're doing an open source project? Yeah, so an example might be if you have a developer sprint. So let's uh-huh. say you have your core developers are scattered, as we know, are often not all in one city. Yep. So if you need them all to come together because you have some aggressive deadlines. Oh, it might cover that travel. Right, or even you know, however that budget kind of works. Uh, so if you have a developer sprint, if, be it if it's covering travel, be it if there's other costs that are incurred with that, that might be things that you could be able to apply for a grant t- to help support and offset some of those fiscal burdens. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Uh, and you talked about sort of evangelizing the, uh, oh, yeah. the, the Python community. <laughs> how, how does that work? How do you do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I'm a Latina. You know, uh-huh. I'm first generation. My father's from Mexico. My mother from Cuba. Uh-huh. And so, I love you the way you talk. <laughs> and so for me, something that I've really, I've, you know, I've very much loved is how global the Python community is. So, as an example, one thing that that we may do, and this is not a this is not at all a requirement, but as a director, I've been able to go and speak at PyCons around the world and kind of t- make sure I, I run some kind of what is the Python Software Foundation Q and A. So, for example, at PyCon Columbia in 2018, a community member there ran a Q&A that was in Spanish, and me and another member of the board were there to help answer questions and kind of work through 
introducing what the Python Software Foundation is and how it is that the Python Software Foundation can help your Python community. Mm. Because again, you know, the growth of Python is not just restricted to the United States, nor- oh, not, North, even, not even close. Right, right. You know, the next billion people coming online, that's Africa, that's South America, that's, that's Southeast Asia. I mean, it, it's not in areas that you know already get well-funded support. Like, Europe or other parts in the world. Yeah, some of the developing countries yeah. they don't they don't have access to um, uh, big corporate sponsors. Right, right. And so I think what's really important is you know making sure that we're we're getting out there and meeting people where they're at because not a, you know it can be difficult to travel to the United States like for example getting a visa. One of our directors yeah. just showing up at PyCon. Exactly. One of our meeting. directors is actually in Zimbabwe. And that is always a little bit of a difficult visa process. Mm -hmm. So, you know, making sure as a director that, you know, we are able to, to make sure, even if it's, you know, that we can't be there in person, I think collectively we, we are really passionate about meeting people where they're at. So if it's, you know, doing a virtual Q&A or even just making yourself available to answer questions mm -hmm. or doing any kind of any kind of support function that we can to help people tap into the resources that the community has, you know, I believe all of our directors are really passionate about that. Yeah, so online support is great, it scales well, but I heard a rumor that you're actually going <laughs> to Africa. Yeah, yeah, I will not be speaking, but I'm really excited. I actually had another reason to be going to Africa, and then, as I mentioned, the director who is in Zimbabwe, her first name's Marlene, she's so, so inspirational. She's actually the chair of the first ever PyCon Africa, which is in Accra, Ghana, and I will actually be attending that next week, which is oh, really exciting. Awesome. Yeah, really exciting. And then actually in the tail end of August, uh, yes, the tail end of August, I will be speaking at PyCon Latin America. How many PyCons are there? <laughs> well, so the what's interesting is the, as I mentioned, we hold the trademark and uh -huh. we actually have very strong core values as a community. And one of them is we want to make sure that our PyCons have the same standards that we build at the PyCon we put on. So mm -hmm. part of that is actually making sure there's a code of conduct that is associated okay. with with your conference that you're running. Do you, do you dictate the code of conduct or you just review their code of conduct? Uh, so we actually have a code of conduct that we ourselves have created and mm -hmm. we're actually in the process of overhauling our code of conduct. We actually hired a external consultant to help us in that process mm -hmm. and we have a code of conduct work group that is comprised of folks from the community and also I myself am a part of. So it's, it's a collective of Pythonistas. Okay. Um, so we are working on m making that a bit more enforceable because it's a bit vague and definitely has some areas for improvement. But we do have a code of conduct that we have, but a requirement is just that you have a code of conduct. So oh, if there okay. are things that you know are unique to perhaps in your country mm -hmm. or your community that you're you're organizing, and obviously You'll you know we may not have right, 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 right. We may not have that expertise. So we, we do we do our best to make sure that we're empowering those organizers that are doing the work on the ground. All right. And so there's a PyCon in Latin America. Where is that one? Yeah, that one's going to be in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Okay. So that will be... And one in Africa and Ghana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so, uh, the, like, so the official, like, if you want to use the name PyCon, you definitely have to, like, contact the Python Software Foundation to say, hey, I want to do a PyCon, uh -huh. um, because that's actually a name that we own and we have we have the trademark You say, for. well, I have to check out Puerto Vallarta <laughs> to make sure that it's okay. I'll be well, there in December. <laughs> That's what I would do. Oh, if I was goodness. On the board. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I mean, it's, I think the thing that is so just, uh, you know, you can go to PyCon. Dot, I was freaking if it's dot com or dot org, and I should know oh, this. I didn't have it up here, actually. <laughs> I just was there. Well, <laughs> you can actually see all the global PyCons that are run around the world. And our director of infrastructure, Ernest, actually put together this resource just this past U.S. PyCon. So again, I forget if it's PyCon.com. It, it, it is .org, although okay. .com might work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say oh, .org, that would make but sense. But I know for sure org works, so I'm yeah. looking at it right now. Yeah, um, so then you can go to .org and you can see the listing of PyCons that are happening around the world. So like, you know, Argentina, Thailand. Oh. You, uh, let's see, what are some other ones? I, I know that uh, Ghana, um, South Africa, there, there's there's a quite, there's quite a lot. <laughs> Uh, excellent. Uh, what else? Uh, tell me more about the Python Software Foundation and yeah, what you're doing with them. Definitely, definitely. So I think the one of the things that's been really, really cool for me that I've seen over time with the Python Software Foundation. So I am sitting in my third term, which is kind of interesting. But um, so terms actually used to be every year. Now they're three um, years. 
and now they're three years. So the part of that kind of shift has been the movement towards how do we retain knowledge and actually have a board that's able to kind of work on things that have a little bit of a longer term view. Mm. So let's say, you know, let's say it's like this, um, let's say it is trying to build out a more robust grants program. So one of the committees that is new that the Python Software Foundation has taken on this last year is the education committee. And we actually did our first call to action for asking our community to submit ideas for education focused opportunities that we could then offer them a grant for. Mm. So for things like this, when we talk about education, we actually do have an educators pre-conference that happens at PyCon. So PyCon is a big event. It's got the core language uh, pre-conference. It's got the educators conference. It's got development sprints after the core conference itself. Um, and it's got a few things that are specific for the PyLadies uh, community. It's many things happening all at once. Right. So obviously with education, when you think about education, education is highly variable based on your country of origin. And also education can be, you know, it's not necessarily always like a fixed one time, oh, I just need money for computers, right? That doesn't really make sense. So when we, when we think about kind of how we, how we kick off that program, Obviously, grants is a part of that, but you know we want to use that to start kind of understanding what our community is actually asking us for, hmm. what topics are going to have the biggest kind of global impact, and really, you know, the reason I, I'm kind of harping on saying, you know, for me, what's been really interesting during my time on the Python Software Foundation has just been able to see the ways in which the Python Software Foundation has been growing up, has hmm. become a much more mature organization, and and this is an example of that. So being a director has been really, really interesting to see when we think about open source, you know, you might think about open source as just, hey, I get to download something and I can use it for free of cost. When mm -hmm. really it's so much more than that. You know, you think about building community and all the work that goes into that. You, there's so many ways to do it and it's a lot of work and it's very humbling work. Yeah. So, so sitting on the board has really given me a different perspective of what that means. I, I know one of the challenges with open source software is the legal aspects of it. Mm -hmm. People that want to reuse it, mm -hmm. and there's uh, uh, how they can use it, and mm -hmm. licensing. And uh, do you help with that at all? So I personally do not, but our foundation does actually have a legal counsel. Okay. And that person has helped us think through our trademark. We do actually also have a specific uh, work group, and that is just the term we use for a collective of volunteers that focus on one specific area. Mm -hmm. So we do have like a trademark work group as well. So when it comes to things like that, we do actually have legal counsel available that is a part of, that is affiliated with our with is that our just, foundation. Is it for you internally, or is this something that you offer to your members? You know, I, I said members. Is that really the, the oh, right word? Oh well, though? actually, no. You're correct. So we, um, so you, anyone can register to be a, a basic member. Okay. You can go on to python.org. Oh. You'll see on the heading it says PSF. So PSF Python Software Foundation. Okay. You can click on that, and then there's details about membership. And so anyone can be a basic member, and then there's other member levels. One supporting. So if you give some money, you can be a supporting member. If you are a, um, there is managing and. The, then there is another, ooh, I should remember this one, but there's two other levels, which for example, if you do five hours, roughly speaking of supporting an, a Python open source project or supporting a Python community. Hmm. Um, and again, those five hours, we're not gonna, like we don't ask you to submit. Here's it's my a, hours every honor month. System. <laughs> it's on the honor system. But all that to say that, um, and that we do actually have members and the difference, the distinction, the main distinction between being a basic and the other levels of members is that when it comes to actually voting on things, for the Python Software Foundation, for example, the election for the directors, that. right? Then you would actually need to be above that be that oh, basic okay. member. So yeah, you are correct that are, there right. is this threshold, this idea of being a member of the community. Okay, so that was an aside. Yes, but uh, I was asking about uh, about legal, legal help. Well, so what what we do actually have people who you know I, I've seen, for example, people email you know like. Um, email at, at python.org. Hey, I am, am I free to use this? Like, how right. you know? What are the legal requirements? And we definitely like respond to those questions. Now, mm -hmm. if you're doing something very aggressive and unique that might have some billable hours behind it, right. we're definitely going to say, hey, <laughs> you know, we've got staff, and and you know, I'm sure we would have to think more deeply. And again, I'm not the legal counsel, yeah. so this is me kind of evaluating it from my um, 
my perspective. Mm -hmm. But definitely we've been we we can respond to kind of basic ideas around, you know, hey, I want to I want to use the Python logo for something or hey, mm -hmm. I, I want to download Python like this. So like obviously we do have some, some of that. Now something that's been a little bit more interesting to kind of get to like what are some interesting services that you can provide. So one of the most popular Python libraries is called requests, which is something written by Kenneth Reitz, which is a beautiful and very simple to use um, library that allows you to do what you think. Requests. Request. <laughs> And so like um, HTTP requests, HTTP requests. Right. and so this um, actually Kenneth Reitz recently said, hey, you know, I I would like to be able to move this. You know, I, I no longer want to be the owner, mm -hmm. um, you know, let's <laughs> but the benevolent dictator for life. Right. I don't want that anymore of this of this library looking for new looking for new possible people to own that. Mm -hmm. So actually we can move. We, we are a, one of the things like the Python Software Foundation will do is we'll move that then into our purview. We'll own that on GitHub and we'll kind of think through like long term. You know, if there is anything around how do we how do we support tools that are really important, or on the other perspective, hey, I I you know managing money as it relates to supporting my Python tool is like hard. I don't want to come up with my my own 501c3. Can you help me? And the answer is yes. We have something called fiscal sponsorship, where you can actually contact the Python Software Foundation and figure out some legal. Uh, the the legalities of what it would take to actually get your project under the 501c3 Python Software Foundation status, yeah. such that if you needed to do um, specific things relating to money, money collection, blah blah blah, um, there is that as well. So yeah, there's there's definitely opportunities to reach out if you have a particular legal, you know, question, yeah. or if you have um, a need to kind of house your tool under something else, or if you need that fiscal sponsorship. So are there, uh, other than Python itself, are there open source projects that are managed by the Python Software Foundation? So we have Python, obviously. We have PyPI, which is the Python Package Index. Um, I don't know all of the projects that is on our GitHub, <laughs> oh. <laughs> which, you know, you can so actually... You, you have your own GitHub repository. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can, go, you can go check that out. We're an actual organization. So if okay. you go to Python, the, the group that's behind that, that is actually managed by the Python Software Foundation. Okay. So it's like our director of infrastructure, as I mentioned earlier, Ernest, he's kind of that, he's he's the person who's running shop on those things. I see, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then um, obviously, you know, if... Folks ask us to, to own, like I said, like requests, for example, if, if we're going to take over ownership of things okay, like that. Okay, so that'll, that'll be part of this, uh, this your GitHub repository yeah, going forward yeah, at some yep. point. All right. Is that sort of a, uh, if it, are, I mean, how many are there? Are there, are there like 10 or are there 100 or 1,000? Do you know? I actually have no idea. Oh, okay. That's, that's an unfair <laughs> question. Then. I know it's a big No, no. That, you know what? It's, it gives me something What's, to look at. Is it github.com slash Python? I believe so. We'll, yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll find it in front of the show notes to verify it. Um, uh, but uh, is it if they're on that site, um, is that sort of an implicit endorsement from you know, your organization? <laughs> you mean like, oh, this is how things ought to be built and uh, why? Or just this is an, <laughs> this is an okay, this doesn't suck. Would be, uh, <laughs> You know, op as open source, it can be great and it can right. be terrible. Um, and sometimes, if as long as it gets the job done, that's good <laughs> enough for a lot of projects. You know, I would say that I don't know if there's an official policy behind that, but I would say if there's like. If there are libraries like requests, if it's not the most downloaded, it is one of the most downloaded uh -huh. tools. And you know, if it's something that's like going into this the Python standard library, obviously we want to make sure that it's got long term support because when something goes away, that's a big thing. Oh yeah, um, so the devil, you, devil yeah. dictator retires or dies, whatever. You know, <laughs> and actually maybe something that kind of gets to some of the um, kind of technical projects that P the Python Software Foundation may oversee. Uh, Python two to Python three, which is the oh, yeah. long winded. Oh my goodness. Is Python 2 official support finally ends the tail end of this year. So actually on having an ability to like sunset some projects, making sure core things are moving from Python 2 to Python 3, mm -hmm. we've had some people kind of reaching out and asking for help with things. So definitely like that's been something also that our group has acted, um, and more so the staff, because us as directors aren't getting involved in that. But mm -hmm. you know, if you did have things like that that you needed to talk to, the PSF could be a group to help you kind of talk through some of that or maybe point you to um, spaces to look at things. But again, the, the Python Software Foundation itself is is focused on the open source community. It is not about necessarily building language because we All have right. core developers that do that. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, this is a lot of interesting stuff. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that we should have? Oh, goodness. Let's see. 
Well, you know, I think one thing that is interesting, and this isn't Python Software Foundation necessarily, but I'm just really, really interested in governance in online communities and online spaces. Uh, and I just, with it, just in Python itself, mm -hmm. something that I think is really, really interesting and what got me into that continued what do you mean kind by of governance governance in the idea of how do how do a group of people that are focused on one tool or one thing come together to mm. dictate how that tool evolves or how the community yeah. works around it um, the way that python as a core language has moved forward in talking about like what goes into the python language that's been interesting to me has been the Python enhancement proposals. Mm. So this is not a PSF specific thing. This yeah. is something that is for the core developers who work on it. But for me, I just think Python, it has all these different kind of examples of how it organizes and how it decides what's gonna be built on it and how, and really how do you interact with a global population that is passionate around Python. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with the Python Software Foundation, we've, we've got the directors who step up and think about the community, think about, you know, what work groups do we need to create? Like I create um, myself and two others, Marlene, the director in Zimbabwe, and then Naomi Cedar, who's actually the chair of the of the board, who's also here in Chicago. We actually started a translations work group to help us think about how we can do translations of like maybe documents on python.org or yeah. what does it mean to do translation in general? Hmm. Um, you know, that, that would be that model. And then you can look at core development and you can look at core development from the perspective of Python Python enhancement proposals, wherein after Guido von Rossum decided to step down, folks that are core developers started saying, what should it be our model for how do we move the language forward and how do we actually decide what goes in the roadmap and what doesn't, became what's called the steering committee. So I think it's just so interesting. We have such this, there's a kind of famous and often used statement um, from Brett Cannon, who's a core Python developer, where he closed out a keynote from um, one of his keynotes from PyCon a few years ago, where he said, you know, I came for the language, but I stay for the community. Oh, yeah. And that, that to me speaks so much to how Python thinks about how it organizes itself from the Python software community huh? to, to how it thinks about organizing itself in terms of the evolution and development of the language. And granted, that's a much smaller group because obviously you need a lot of technical expertise and, and knowledge that you acquire over time on your path to becoming a developer. But I think those both speak to the same sides, two different sides of the same I quarter. agree. I think it's a lot of it is all about communication and getting yeah. the, the developers to talk to the mm -hmm. users and I mean the language developers yep. to talk to the software developers. Yeah, definitely. And to get them to talk to each other, the uh, the developers talk to each other as well. Yeah. Um, and I think that your organization is helping to facilitate mm -hmm. a lot of that communication. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it all kind of comes yeah. full circle. Yeah. I mean, we have directors and we have a director from Let's see, we have a director in Australia, we have a director in Africa, we have directors from Europe and the United States. And I mean, I think if that right there is not a glowing endorsement of how, you know, this group really thinks about trying to, to you know, going that extra nine yards about how it is that we're making sure that we're, act, we're actually representing the community as rich is the actual users of our community itself. I, I, I don't really know what's a better endorsement than that. Excellent. Where would people go to learn more about the Python software? Definitely. Foundation? Yeah, so python.org, obviously for anything about Python, mm -hmm. you'll see in the nav bar header, Python Software Foundation, PSF is the acronym. So you'll see PSF, you can click on that. That will navigate you then to the, to the landing page for Python Software Foundation. And there is information about membership. I believe you just click members, membership, something to that extent. Mm -hmm. If you wanna know about the grants program, it's, it's a top level header there, which is grants. And then we also have a Python Software Foundation blog as well. It's on it's on Blogger. I don't actually remember that, but you can you can Google Python Software Foundation blog, and it should be the top hit if you want to actually actually also keep up to date with things that are happening in the community. And then last but not least, if you're on that python.org forward slash PSF um, URL, you can also look at all of our meeting minutes from every time the board meets, which is published under if it's not under uh, it might be published under the board. Either way. It's one of those top level headers where you can click and you'll see meaning minutes and you can you could check out some of those. So yeah, there's a, there's more than one way to check us out. <laughs> Excellent. Where would people go to learn more about Lorena Mesa? Oh, I have lorenamesa.com. 
awesome. <laughs> yeah, and actually on there is probably the best way. Um, I'm pretty active on Twitter. My Twitter handle's pretty long. Oh, it's like Lorena. <laughs> yes, yes, Lorena Nicole, because I am a big football fan, which is uh, what I oh, believe. That's the, like, that that is yes. That actually, I was actually watching a U.S. Mexico game when my Twitter <laughs> handle became as a result. So Lorena Nicole with four O's for your L O four O's. All right, I just followed you. Yeah. Hola, mis amigos de tecnología, or to say in English, hi, technology friends. I love hearing about the really, really cool ways that you may be using Python in your day to day, be it you're just learning how to play with some code and Python seems like a fun language because you like Monty Python or, you know, you like Python snakes whatever, or maybe you're doing something really, really nifty with Python, like some machine learning project that's pretty interesting. For example, I have a machine learning project using Python where I use a deep learning neural network to create telenovela scripts. That, that's those really, really intense soap operas. If you are looking to share anything at all with Python, I'm definitely the person that would love to hear about that. You can contact me at lorenamessa.com. My email address is on there as well as my Twitter. I would love to hear from you. And thank you so much for catching a little bit about the Python Software Foundation today. Hasta luego.